The buzzing of my phone disturbed me from my awkward, sleepless rest. I scrabbled at it, taking the call before the sound of the ringtone could wake the man slumbering next to me. I'd realised earlier in the evening that our relationship was over, so the last thing I wanted was for him to open his eyes and opt for another round of eider-down action. I grabbed a crumpled pile of clothes off the floor, crept to the ensuite bathroom and closed the door quietly before I put on the light. The call was from my brother, and when he rang in the middle of the night, it wasn't going to be a conversation that I wanted overheard. Hey bro, I whispered. Don't tell me. There's a really happening party on down at the morgue, and I should put on a dress and join you there with all the cool cadavers. He laughed. Spot on, sis, but don't worry about bringing a bottle, he says. The snack machine has as much warm lemonade as you want. Why are you whispering? I sighed. It's complicated, I said. I'll tell you later. Actually, I'll tell you now because I don't have my car with me. I'm at Jay's. Can you come and get me? Otherwise, I'm stuck here until morning unless I start hitchhiking. There was a pause. Please don't tell me you two are splitting up, he said. You only just introduced me to him, and he's a really great guy. Wills, I can't talk about this now. Please come and get me, and I'll play Raise the Dead Body with you at the slaps. I rattled off the address and ended the call before he could argue. Then I dressed as quietly as I could in the teensy cocktail dress and strappy heels I'd been wearing earlier. It was a swelteringly hot July night, and I hadn't even bothered with a jacket when I left my house. I'd held housewarmings in smaller rooms than Jay's bathroom. Like every inch of his house, it had been decorated by a professional, which meant stark, minimal fittings, shades of magnolia, a crew, champagne and taupe, and far too many mirrors to suit a girl who'd just dragged herself out of bed post-shag and needed to make a swift exit. Extensive titivation wasn't on the agenda. Basic hygiene was going to have to do. I settled for cleaning my teeth and stuffing my hair into the collar of my marabou shrug. I wasn't poised to win any modelling contracts, but I wouldn't be mistaken for a vagrant and offered change. It was the middle ground I usually pitched for.